This video was brought to you by Stoenberg, Abed Root Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Biel. Yo, what's up? We're in front of the house, and I was about to say winter is coming, but winter is already here. I think winter came when I was in Thailand. <laughs> so, this is the, the first yellow test of the year. Yes, we're gonna do it with Aria. So, I have charged the car to 100%. I preheated it a little bit. It's now pre uh, just idling a bit with HVAC on without plugging in, but uh, we're gonna leave soon. So, um, not much going on. Uh, I did not bring EcoFlow or anything this time. Yeah, yeah, you know, I have to remember to start doing this. Yeah, after living in Norway for almost 40 years, you start getting some winter reflexes. So, there is still a Viking in me. We're gonna go to Yelo, and the weather forecast tells me that there will be lots of snow on the way there. This is exactly what we're looking for because this is the front wheel drive 87 kilowatt hour. It's an advanced trim, so it's not the evolved trim, it's not the highest trim. For example, it's lacking some, yeah, you can't adjust the middle console. Uh, the second glove box here is manual. I'm not sure what kind of headlights we have though. Do we have adaptive headlights? We'll find out, I guess. Uh, so it's missing the, the panorama roof. So it's like the middle trim. So that'll be interesting to take a trip. We will also take this same car to the Arctic Circle, maybe already uh, a day after tomorrow, we'll see. But you see, it's already snowing a little bit here. And we start a little bit late, that's fine, because I don't want too much traffic. And uh, the, yeah, the destination is Yelo. So we will see, by the way, where the heck was this again? I think I have to cancel this or recalculate. Uh, yeah, you have to do, you have to recalculate to show what the car estimates uh, we will arrive with. It's kind of silly. There. So the car estimates 27%, all right? I guess we'll see how many percent we actually arrive with then. Start. Okay. All right. Start your, en your engines and let's go. We have been driving for about one and a half hours. We're getting close to Gulsvik. And uh, yes, it's been snowing more and more now. Uh, there were parts where it wasn't that much snow, but you see now when I try to enable cruise control, and this happens, temporarily disabled, front radar blocked. Huh. You know, this is the kind of stuff we are going to test in, the, in this test, in the yellow test to see if the front radar gets blocked or not, and also how long it gets blocked. Will it recover by itself, or do we have to stop and clear it? I mean, it's not like we we want to use uh, adaptive cruise control over here anyway, but uh, yeah, I mean, there could be situations where the roads are nice and straight, and uh, you could use cruise control just fine. We just passed flow now and we hit some proper winter. So here we have compacted snow on the ground here. And um, you remember that uh, Aria, at least this one is front wheel drive. So how does it behave on uh, these kind of conditions? Well, let's see now, we have a slight curve. Let's regen, full regen, what happens? No problem. No locking of the front wheels. And then we accelerate. Uh, okay, okay. The traction control feels that uh, it doesn't have that great traction, so it just throttles back a little bit. But um, does it allow a little bit of wheel spin, though? Let me try. Let me slow down a bit. Yeah, maybe a little bit of wheel spin. So that gives it perfect uh, balance to, um, to to drive around here. You just have to get a feel of uh, how the surface is. And uh, I have. Um, Continental Viking Contact 7 studless winter tires, they are really, really good and also good on snow. So, uh, just have to try to maybe overtake that Tesla. I think there's a Model S in front of us. 
let's see how we can overtake. That's also one uh, big uh, yeah, test. Let me see. Okay, this one. Let me see. Yeah, I remember this. Wait, wait, do I? Yeah, this this one. I remember this stretch. Okay, let's overtake. Go, go, go. Fairly easy to, to accelerate. Seems stable on the snow, you see. Okay, if you want to change direction, just do it gently. Don't do any uh, sudden movements. And you're fine. The rumbling you hear, that that's the rumbles, rumble uh, thing in the middle of the road. So I've been driving this stretch here probably hundreds of times by now. I'm guessing maybe 200, 300 times. <laughs> so I know every corner of this road, even at night. But um, yeah, so how is Arya then? I mean, uh, is it good or bad to have front wheel drive? Well, actually, I think it's, it's, uh, it's not a disadvantage at least to have front wheel drive. For, for region, then front wheel drive in, on slippery road is actually better rather than relying on the rear wheels to, uh, to region. For example, in, uh, in the MEB cars, you know, rear wheel drive. Hmm, I wonder how they will perform. Uh, you have to turn off. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. I wonder if that's some kind of uh, high beam assist for the lead bar. But let's see. Now in the curve again. Let's try to region. Full region. Zoop. I have B mode even. Huh. No uh, weird behavior there. Okay. And when I accelerate, okay. There's a little bit of uh, traction control going on. I'm trying to figure out how much power I'm allowed or I should use. Wow. This is. This is perfect. Uh, the Aria performs flawlessly on these conditions as, as long as you have good tires like these ones or I'd say uh, Nuke and Hakaplita R3, R5 then no problem you, like, you, you don't have to have all-wheel drive you know, all-wheel drive typically gives you false uh, security because it, it will give you better acceleration uh, but uh, then you become maybe overconfident because you still have to brake in time, right? But here, when I accelerate, okay, I get the feedback that uh, I don't have uh, the best traction, and then I change my behavior based on that. So, of course, if you have a, if you have a cabin somewhere out in the bush where you have to drive off-road, then I guess all-wheel drive would be nice. But or, or if you're a really skilled driver and you turn off traction control on public road, uh, and you know what you're doing, then I guess all-wheel drive is better. But uh, for most uh, deadly people like me, then uh, front-wheel drive is just fine. arrived at Soko K Yelo so uh, it took a little bit over three hours consumption 211 watt hour per kilometer I think that's actually pretty good hmm yeah given the weather and everything so minus five degrees Celsius over here nice and cold hmm what does that sound I think that sound the H back right but um, yes so let's see, we're, 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 huh? what the heck? We arrived at 42%, wow. Um, I wonder if we almost have enough juice to go back home. <laughs> but uh, remember that the car estimated that we will arrive with 27% and then, uh, yeah, this is wonderful. It's simply amazing how much range this leaf, uh, this area has. Oh, look here. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's a good idea to kick it off, but okay, I did it. Anyway, let's hear also. Ah, it's so satisfying. Okay, but let's plug it in and see how fast it can charge now. Well, before we start, let's do a little fleer inspection here. Huh? Hmm. This is interesting. 
where's the radar? Uh, huh. Well, you see here? Hmm, this is a big mystery. I'm not sure where the radar is, but um, there is no uh, clear evidence of uh, heated stuff here. You see here, it's still nice and warm in the cabin. Uh, what about on the side? Yeah, wow, the wheels, <laughs> the wheels are hot. Someone's been hammering it. What else is going on here? Yeah, I took the drink from outside, you see. Want to cool down the drink. This one is also really hot. Huh? The brakes also. What about the back? Yeah. Hey, interesting. Why is that part warmer than the rest? That means that there must be some kind of heat leakage. Oh, you know, I can even see it here, you see? Here we have some, This section here is actually warmer. Heat must be leaking out. Hey, oh, big speed, no, no, cheat. Oh, we're back, let me see. What about on this side? Yeah, the same there, huh? What the heck is that thing? Uh, you can also see it here, that this part here has melted snow. Wait, that must be, if there's heat loss here, that must be um, not good for efficiency then. Well, okay, um, the backup camera is uh, <laughs> totally covered. Here it is, there, there, there. Now, now I can finally see when I back up. And there, wait, wait, is there a sprayer here? Uh, I don't think so, what, or is it? Let to check. But you know, people who always claim that the charge port in the front is good, well, like I show you here, is it still a good idea to have the charge port in the front? And also, if it's not uh, cold like this, then you will have salt schmutz vest in the front here. You have to touch it to open it because as far as I know, there is no car with front charge port that is motorized. And you can just get frozen charge port in the front. So having it in the side here is way better, you see. No ice, nothing here, but there's something weird here. When I opened here, I saw that there was some ice it seems like the seal here, well, hmm, there is not even a seal here. There is no rubber seal here. There should be, because a little bit of snow got in here, and then I guess melted from the heat in the car. And then if it's a freaking snowstorm, you could possibly get frozen charge port in, well, I don't know what, you, charge port cover or whatever here. So I think if uh, Nissan want to improve this, they have to add a rubber seal here. And here we have the Circle K Hyper Hypercharger. So uh, most cars, you have to stop the car before you can plug in. But I think actually Aria, you can just plug it in while it's running. And then just show the RFID and uh, we should start charging, right? Okay, this one. Or do we have, yeah, you see, wait. Or did we get the uh, fail handshake? Um, I don't remember how it was. Yeah, you see? Okay, let me see. How fast will it charge? Well, actually, now it's a little bit uh, misleading because we're also using the HVAC. But whatever, whatever. Let's go inside the car. I can also show you inside here. So you can go here. 40 kilowatts. Wait, that's it? Huh? We've been driving from Oslo. The battery should be nice and warm. Um, and I can show you something else. If you go here, well, not here. EV. You will see that the battery heater option here was not on. On purpose, because I didn't want to waste any energy since I'm going, let's say if I just want to go to my destination and sh slow charge there, then I, I don't need to heat up the battery. It will still charge, you know, 40 kilowatt or it will take maybe two, uh, three to seven kilowatt. But are we really getting 40 kilowatt? Let me go outside and check here. It's freezing outside. Oof, it's windy and cold. Probably feels like minus 10 degrees. Uh, okay, so we are only getting 40 kilowatt. Oh, <laughs> 
<laughs> Do you know what that means? We're gonna let the battery soak out here in the wind and in the cold weather. And then tomorrow morning, we will see how damn slow is this car gonna charge then. All right, let's get over to the hotel. We have arrived at the hotel. So um, just a check now. You see the status, minus five degrees Celsius, 41% and 150 kilometers of range. So we will see in the morning uh, how the numbers are then. Oh, I have to say, Thailand would be way better than this place right now, but a man's gonna do what he's gonna do. So uh, this time we stay at Highland Lodge uh, because um, the single room over there at uh, Dr. Holmes is not available. So, um, wait, where is Dr. Holmes? I'm not sure, it's, it's up there somewhere. But okay, so I parked the Aria here and we have not plugged in. There's some AC charging possibilities at the hotel, but I will purposely not use it under normal conditions. I'll be using it, of course, uh, to top it up to 100% in the morning. But uh, this time we will see what happens if we don't plug in. We're checked in now. This is a tiny room. So maybe I should be a bit quiet because I think there's a neighbor room. You know, these doors are freaking scary, man. Uh, 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 is it locked? It's locked, right? But this is the main entrance. Okay, anyway, I was looking for a uh, uh, fridge. Nope, no such, such thing. It's not common to have, or I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's not common to have fridge in Norway or Europe, but in US and also in Asia, fridge in hotel room is quite common. So here it looks like a freaking prison. That's fine. And the bathroom is like this. Yeah, at least it's nice and warm here. So, oh, I need to bring this home. You know, are you those type of guys who bring this home as souvenir, even though you don't use all of it? And that's me, man, yeah. What else can we bring with us? But okay, so there's no kettle here, nothing. I'm a little bit hungry, but I got an idea. You see, I brought this turmat, but it says trek and eat. Let see, this is some kind of uh, noodle, huh? No, it's, it's pasta bolognese vegetarian, just add water. So this is from uh, Storenberg, they, re they sell these. Same with this one. This is some kind of chocolate muesli. Wow, okay, I guess there will be dessert. So, as always, bring the spork and then hot water from home it's like a little, nice little trip here in the cabin feels like a cabin cozy and this is what it looks like Ooh, just a bunch of pasta wait oh, i need to mix it Okay, there's some bolognese stuff at the bottom. Let's try a little bit of both now. Oh, this is hot. Hmm, hmm, good. Hmm, yeah.